Hey guys, sorry here, and uh, we're back today with making the mortarboard tables finally. As you can see, we've got some roofers lat. I acquired this over about a week or so on sites. Found it out the skip. I went up to the site manager and said, Can I take these out the skip? And he was like, Yeah, take whatever you want. And uh, yeah, always ask when you're taking materials off site because sometimes some sites can be funny if you just start rooting through skips. But yeah, these were, these are the, the managers on these sites were sound and just let me take as much as I wanted. So I've got some blue, blue lat and red lat. It's all pressure treated wood, so uh, it's gonna break before it rots, basically. Uh, I'm gonna end up sanding this up once I've finally constructed the tables, I'm gonna sand it up so I don't get splinters moving it about. Even though a lot of the time we're wearing gloves on site, you can, you know, always splinter your hands. So we've got a little multi-purpose woodworking table here. It's my dad's, but you can get them for about 20 quid uh, from Wix or Screwfix or something like that. Got a table saw, DeWalt one. It's a corded jobby. It is, it's not mine, so privileged to be able to use it today. Really good for getting your 45 degree angles, as you can see on here. And obviously uh, straight 90 degrees. It's set to 90 degrees, so we won't get a swivel cut. Because so I was going to do it with a wood saw or a circular saw, which I cut the salcons with. And obviously that wouldn't have gone well. Um, other things you're going to need, ignore all my weight set, obviously. Um, been weightlifting for you know powerlifting for like 10 years coming on so that's why i'm the size i am i'm not just fat uh, anyway yeah, we've got a tape measure for marking up uh, we've got cheap drill you can tell this is mine this is where all the this is where all quality stops cheap fairx aldi drill a couple of drill bits got that one for a pilot hole um this one for making your center swivel swivel piece for your bolts my little pilot hole drill drill bit Pencil, marking up the marking up the wood, obviously. I'm not a joiner, but I did do joinery at college when I was deciding what I wanted to do as a as a trade. I did all I did some plastering, tiling, joinery, painting, decorating, did the whole sort of band really. Got my charger for me but for me one battery I've got. Uh, these are the bolts for your centre pieces, for your centre um you won't allow your boards to fold away. Uh, so that's that's handy. They're M8 m8 by 130 millimeter bolts Got 10 in there some washers in between so it allows them to slide easier m8 washers standard 100 pack got a stanley t square it's also my dad's got uh got some five mil five millimeter by 80 millimeters multi-purpose screws i expect uh could have a look at them on tool station that's where i got them uh pretty self-explanatory that's for just screwing the wood together the main pieces to form the table itself and then i've got some 60 mils here five by 60s uh and there to uh screw in your support pieces your 45 degree support pieces in between the uh in between the table legs just get some more support we've got an impact driver to do all this five ampere hour battery and um, this is the sort of stuff we use for the uh nine inch cutter at work uh yeah well, I'm, I'm copying this video for a guy called Mortar Life. I'll leave his video in the, descri in the description. I got the idea from him. I've seen people with uh, different bits of kit when it comes to uh, mortar tables and making them out of wood, out of metal, fabricating them, welding them. Well, this is just something anyone can do with the right with the right tools, obviously. You could do this, what I'm about to do today, with a wood saw, but I'm just using this for ease. Uh, and it just it would just be quicker with that, you know what I mean? So... Uh, this is this is just going to help. It's going to if anyone wants to save money on on uh, on buying these sixty pound rough neck stands or some of the thirty or forty pound ones, you can just do it for this. Cost me nothing. All that all the materials there uh, cost me fourteen pounds. And then obviously I had to acquire the, the tools myself, but I've just got them off my dad. Uh, I own that one, but the rest of them basically my dad's, other than the normal brick lane tools. So yeah, I'm fortunate in that respect. So let's get on with measuring. Right, well, first of all, what I've done, I've taken the uh, the circular saw, obviously it does a really accurate cut, and I've cut just about 10 mil off each bit of the wood, uh, each few lengths. These all measure over 700. So we've got a nice square edge uh, for the uh, tables to sit on. And obviously I want ideally a square edge at each side, so 
I'm going to show a bit of footage now of me cutting these to 700. So we've marked the first piece of wood at 700, with this mark here. And now we've just got an F clamp, it's a normal profile clamp, just loosely loosely clamped. And we've got these, got these all lined up with square edges that we've cut, put a little T squared on them straight away. So uh, looks all right for my house. And now uh, I'm going to mark these all the way across with the uh, pencil. Right, time to cut these. Now we've got us for 700 pieces. There's a little bit of variation, a couple of mil, but obviously I'm a bricklayer, so I'm not to, I'm not to 20 mil to be honest. But uh, there we go, four 700s there for your main legs. Now we're going to make the internal cross pieces. Uh, so we need four of them at 460 millimeters. So I'm going to get to trimming the ends off some more of this wood to make it square and mark us 460s up again. So uh, I'm just going to start voicing over the bits of the clips where I speed it up because as you can see uh, me doing woodwork I'm really slow I don't know where to put my tools. Uh, I'm using a small workbench that isn't really big enough for doing uh, what I'm wanting to do I kind of need another one but where I was going wrong was when I was measuring the 460s and any other measurements to be honest I was hooking my tape over the end of the wood which you lose a couple of mil so if you're going to do your measurements this way you need to do all your measurements like that so you hook your tape over and all the measurements read the same uh, instead of doing some of them where you hold the tape at the other side and vice versa uh, but as you can see me doing the same, this different method here where I'm putting my thumb to the measurement at the other end and then marking it with the metal part of the tape and that's giving a different measurement so if I measure it hooking the metal piece over you're losing a couple of mil with that metal piece so I'm going to work on that next video and measure all my cuts the same, so they measure the same instead of just changing the way I measure each time. Uh, that was the main reason why <laughs> this, these clips are taking so long, so uh, we'll get to the next clip and I'll, uh, I'll cut and speed some of this up. There's four 60s as internal pieces. So just imagine there be the internals that are attached to that, in theory. Uh, let's move on with the next step. So last clip I fucked up, and as you can see here, I drilled the wrong side of the wood. Uh, I should have drilled the thin side of the button, I drilled the flat side. So this is gonna be used, these pieces are gonna be used for, for supporting pieces. This, Blue stuff's quite wet anyway, so I'm going to try to use mostly this red stuff. So we've got a couple of pieces squared up here, 460, marked in the centre at 230. So let's just check with the tape measure there. See, 230, just about, 230 there. And then it's 25 mil thick, so 12 and a half mil. Not exact, so now we're going to use the small drill bit and then progress up to the bigger drill bits. We've got it clamped to the bench, I'm going to get on it. So, as you can see, we're using the cheapo drill and we're starting off with the smallest drill bit here, drilling a little pilot hole. Um, and then, obviously, it's one of the main things to get right is which I've done wrong in this video is I wasn't drilling very plumb, so you want to try and keep your arm plumb. Obviously, this takes practice. Obviously, if you're joining, you're probably already drilling hard to drill straight. 
but obviously uh, and the, the quality of drill makes a difference because this was a quite weak drill so it was really chewing through the wood and some of the uh, some of the blue pieces of wood were quite wet so it was hard to drill through uh, I moved down to a thicker drill bit and uh, if I'd have done this again I'd have uh, tried to mark up obviously everything correctly which I was doing the same technique last time was Mark, you know, putting the tape over the wood instead of actually taping it to the actual measurement. So I was, you know, a few mil off centre, and obviously because I was uh, drilling two at once, I had the error of drilling a bit out of plumb, which made the, the bottom hole really out of plumb. So I'd drill one piece of wood at a time next time when I build them, and we'll make a time lapse uh, of me building them at like eight times speed. Uh, tomorrow when I really you know hone down my skill at getting these done and then in like the second or third one I'm, I do so right guys I'm going to skip ahead on this you get the idea of what I'm doing getting them hill, drill, uh, holes drilled by obviously progressing up drill bits so I don't chew through the wood or split it right see you in the next clip So as we can see, some of the holes aren't quite central, but once we get everything attached and every, all the, all the uh, bolts married up, we can always try going through again with the drill, making the hole a slight bit bigger, because obviously we've got the, the eight millimeter bolt. Can you see how much, how much wiggle room that's got? So that wiggle room is not also just for, you know, the strength of the, uh, you know, for the size of the bolt. It's also for error when drilling. As you could see, I was using the cheaper drill, but when it comes to the holes, this is the this is the worst one by far. This this one here, it's all, all the way far out to the side here, which isn't going to be very good. But we'll work with it. We'll work with it and see what we can do. Maybe we can uh, make another hole here, and then I may even, if I have the opportunity to, put just screw another small bit of timber to this. Uh, it shouldn't affect the strength as much, obviously, because the weight's more in the legs and not in this centerpiece. But it's the first attempt, you know, we'll try to get better on the next one. Good thing to do also to make sure your bolts are going to fit through your pairs that you've drilled. I recommend getting two pieces of wood, putting the drill bit in and trying to feel for the flushness of the wood on one side. And that, that goes through nice and easy through both. Same on this one, nice flushness on one side. And that means you want to keep these two pieces together. And then and obviously when you come to attach these to your tables, you know which two pairs will go where. And uh, you should have a nice smooth moving table so this were taking some time so i thought i'd get a, a budweiser to uh help things go a bit smoothly uh so this next step is to take one of the legs that we've already pre-cut squared off and we're going to measure 50 millimeters down from the top and we're going to mark two at 50 millimeters and basically, the idea is, I'll just mark it up off camera now. So as you can see, we've marked 50 on his two long pieces, 50 mil there. And then we've got 75 with a centre where a screw is going to be screwing through to attach them. So I've marked all these all the way around, as you can see. So that's where my screw's going in. And then I'm going to do it on the floor to show you a bit easier. Just for, for recording purposes. So we want that like that. That's what it's going to look like, the first first table leg, as you could say. So I'm going to shift this circular saw now, all that crap, onto the floor and I'm going to do it on that top of that table. So, just sped this up for the uh, just for length of record time. When I first were doing this, because this is my first attempt at making one of these tables, uh, you know, not got much experience with a drill or impact drivers really. I built my fence in my back garden, but that's about it. Um, that you saw at the beginning of the video, that feathered fence I built it. But uh, as you can see, the table I'm using, this little woodworking table, it's not really big enough for what we're doing. So I'm gonna, because it was raining outside, I was gonna set the big trestles up, the big plastic ones you can see to the rear of me. But I didn't end up doing that. So uh, obviously because it was raining, but hopefully tomorrow it's gonna give, bit, give better weather. And I can get them outside and I'll have a lot more space to move around on them big trestles and drill and stuff like that. 
because I was trying to get my eye down like a sniper to really get me uh, get them drilled plumb and stuff like that. So I'm just putting pilot holes in here, as you can see. I'm ready to drill my uh, uh, put my eighty mil screws in, and uh, this will just stop you splitting the wood. Obviously, no one knows about anything about woodwork. Uh, you know, thin bits of timber. Uh, you'll definitely split the wood in one go if you don't put pilot holes in. You know what I mean? Even even big bits of timber you can split them. You know, like fencing timber, um, and especially the type of screw as well. So, as you can see, using the uh, five millimeter by eighties. Yeah. So, right. I'm gonna uh, speed some of this up a bit more, and uh, you'll see me uh, putting the screws into the wood with the impact driver partially, and then lining them up, but. When I did this again, I just, uh, you know, did it all in one go. So did the did the drilling and the screwing at the same time. So I was just trying to get my bearings on how to do it without fucking it up. So that's why it took me so long. So here we are, finally. We've got half a half a, half a table. And we're going to measure this bottom piece, 65. So I'm going to mark that right now. So, we're back again as you saw me marking those up there. So, we'll come to this side because this little workbench is only big enough for the circular saw. So, we've got, a, we've got as you can see here, we've got a 65 by 85 mil centre where that piece will attach. I've not bothered marking, mark, you know, I've not bothered marking that this time. I'm just going to pre drill it with a little pilot hole. Same at this side. Pre-drill with a little pilot hole, straight through, obviously like so, it's going to look like that. It's taking me quite a while, so bear in mind, like, this video may only be a few minutes long with a lot of cuts. But, um, this is the first time, obviously I'm not a joiner or anything, I'm just a bricklayer and I've never really constructed anything myself. Using screws and angles and tape measures. So this is first time, so it's taking me a bit, little bit of time. Been at it a couple of hours now, believe it or not, and I'm only halfway there. But we're making some progress, slowly but surely. Hopefully next the next one I make, I'll do it in like half the time. So, right, let's get on and drill the next holes. Bear in mind, when attaching these cross pieces, remember what we did on the floor earlier, well, we got both, we lined both of the holes up. This one is for that one. So I took the top one of the bolts, and then this top one is over here. So the bolts will line up. Um, in theory, they should, but we'll find out. So it doesn't matter if we get it back to front, you can always spin that one back to front. Just make sure when you're putting in your next cross pieces, so in your cross piece, in, uh, you know, when you're putting that one to the bottom and that one to the top, you just check they line up before you do it. I also have a bit of a cockeyed, cockeyed table. So there we go. Just I've just uh, I, I, I went to record that clip and it it uh, didn't record. But as you can see, I've just screwed my uh, same again. Put the pilot holes in. You know, screw in, screw in the other side. Held them held them square to the lines I've marked, and uh, screwed them together with impact driver. Bit upset I didn't get that bit on footage, but oh well. Right. Let's make the next one. So now that's together, we now need to put our support pieces in. So this should be, theoretically, let's have a check. Should be 45 degrees. So that's 45. So luckily, I've got a crosscut saw that does 45 degree cuts. But if you didn't, you'd have to get a little bit of roofers lat and then just mark it. So move it over. Like that, and then we'll do it on cam underneath this piece of timber, and there that's your 45 degree cut. So, roughly, we want as, we want as cross pieces around 200 mil, around 200 mil for supporting pieces. I'm going to go cut some 45 degree support pieces now, and then uh, you'll see me do it on the cross cut saw. So. 